So, today's video is the first in the entire technical photography course, and it's an introduction to exposure. All I'm going to talk about in this video is basically the principles. I'm not even going to really get into the technical nitty gritty side of things. Those will come as I discuss individual aspects like aperture, shutter speed, and so on. So, get stuck in, I'll see you at the other end. So why is knowing about exposure so important? I mean, the pictures you take on your camera phone come out okay, don't they? Well, apart from those times when you've got your friends standing in front of the landscape and they come out really dark and the sky comes out really bright, or those times you're trying to freeze somebody jumping and they come out a bit blurred, yeah, I suppose it, it probably would help to understand about exposure, wouldn't it? The reason exposure is so vital is that the technical underpinning of exposure ties into almost everything else you'll do. Um, not only does getting the exposure right matter in terms of how light or how dark the shot is so that people can see what you want them to see in the final image, but the bits that go into makeup exposure, namely the aperture, the shutter speed and the ISO, have their own creative effects. Uh, and they tie in very, very closely to a particular image you might be trying to create, a certain effect you're trying to create, and they're all interrelated. So it's no use you know, desperately trying to achieve a certain thing and wondering why every time you change one of these settings, the other settings go in the other direction, if you don't understand that there is a direct relationship between all of them. Okay. Now, obviously, we're going to go into this in more depth as we go through the course, but that's effectively why you need to understand about exposure. Okay. So that you can understand how to get those lovely, shallow depth of field images where the eyes are just in focus and everything else drops out and beautiful, you know, shallow depth of field, lovely out of focus backgrounds or how you can get a landscape shot where every drop, direct grain of sand from the foreground all the way to a mountain in the background is pin sharp and in focus, how you can freeze people's motion when they're jumping or running very, very fast, and how you can create clean, high quality images no matter what. All of these things are tied into exposure. Now at its most basic level, exposure simply means how light or how dark the image is. But as you'll see, there's quite a lot more to it than that. Just going to take a quick couple of moments at the end of a location shoot out here in beautiful leafy Surrey to explain to you what exposure is and how it works. Okay, very, very brief, big overview, nothing too detailed. All exposure is, is how light and how dark an image is. It's as straightforward as that. Okay, and the way it works is very, very simple. Light comes in through the lens. Okay, as it goes through the lens, it passes through an aperture, which is basically a hole. That hole can be really big or really small. Obviously, a bigger hole lets in a lot of light. A smaller hole doesn't let much light in. As it reaches the camera body, it will then pass through a shutter. Now, a shutter is effectively a blind that opens and closes for a precise period of time. And again, if it's open for a long period of time, it lets lots of light in. If it doesn't open for very long, not much light gets in. And then right at the back of the camera is the actual image sensor itself. And that's how the image is formed. It's where all your megapixels are. And that sensor can be more or less sensitive to light. Okay, that's it. Straightforward as that. In comes the light, goes through an aperture that's large or small, passes through a shutter that's open for a long period of time or a brief period of time, and hits an image sensitive sensor at the back that can be more or less sensitive. All three of those are related to each other. So if you want to maintain a consistent exposure, if you make a change in one area, you've got to make a corresponding change in the other. And all three of them have some creative effect upon the image, which we'll go into much more detail in the rest of the course. I hope that makes sense. That's a pretty brief overview, but it really doesn't get much more complex than that at a basic level. I want to talk very briefly about the concept of the right exposure. In simple terms, there is no such thing as the right exposure. That was easy, wasn't it? In practice, however, the right exposure, the correct exposure, is whatever combination of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO you need to create the results that you wanted so that the viewer sees what you want them to see. It's a bit more complex, isn't it? It also makes you realize that there is no such thing as the perfect shutter speed, the perfect aperture, or the perfect combination of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO that you should always aim for. That doesn't exist, okay? What exists is the right combination for the result you are looking to create. That's the right exposure. Cameras in any automatic mode, whether that's aperture priority program or anything of the sort, will average the exposure out based on a massive amount of data and the algorithm that they're working to. Now that average result, that right exposure that they've come up with, may be very, very far from the result you have got in mind. 
And this is where knowing how exposure actually works, knowing how the three facets of exposure interact with each other can be so vital because it will allow you to take control and create the image you are looking for. Okay, enough being vague, how does all this actually work? Well, probably the best place to start is the famous, to photographers at least, exposure triangle. Now there are three things which affect exposure. Aperture, shutter speed, and sensitivity, which usually gets called ISO. Before we go into more detail on each of those three things in the upcoming videos, there are two things you need to understand about them. The first thing is that those three are completely interrelated. And if you want to keep the same exposure, if you make a change to one of them, you will have to alter the other two to match in some way. You cannot escape that, they are linked. The second thing that helps to understand before you get going is that exposure is measured in something called stops. Don't ask me why, there is some long and boring explanation I was given ages ago. It doesn't matter why they're called stops. What you need to understand and what will be vital going forward is that exposure is measured in stops. We start with a whole stop, but they can easily be subdivided into thirds, halves, quarters, sometimes even tenths of a stop, depending on the degree of accuracy we're talking about. But going forward, a stop is a unit of exposure. Now, the last thing I want to talk about before we start getting our hands dirty and start actually using our cameras is the importance of manual mode. For all the stuff I'm going to talk about, I want you to put your camera in manual mode. Don't be afraid. Now, the reason for this is very simple. I want you to alter the various settings we're going to be talking about as we go through aperture, shutter, and ISO, and I want you to be able to see the effects that has on the image. And if you're in any sort of automatic mode, the camera will be compensating for the changes you make so you won't see these changes. This is actually something where I got stuck way back in the day when I was learning, or right, that was film in those days, but I couldn't quite understand how all these changes I was making to the camera, I'd get my prints back, nothing seemed to have altered, because the automatic exposure mode was compensating for them. Okay, so stick to manual mode, make the changes I'm going to talk about, look at the different effects it has, and you should learn what the differences are. Okay, any form of automatic mode is going to try and average them out, and it won't help you learn. Now, this is why, as I said right at the beginning of the intro to the whole course, you're going to struggle with a camera that won't let you use manual mode. So most smartphones are probably out. Uh, some of the more advanced ones, I think, might let you do some degree of manual control, but ultimately you want a camera where you can adjust the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Okay, without that, you're never really going to get a proper grasp of how exposure works. So without further ado, let's get stuck into the first proper topic of exposure, which is aperture. I will see you soon.